um, we are, I think the nation is being assaulted by that individual, the regularity, the monotonous regularity with which that particular individual appears on, 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 on the media. Um, what can you say to the nation that can put this prorogation issue uh, and the, you know, the skeptics in particular, what can you say to, to put them to rest? Well, what I could say, Eddie, is that uh, the nation knows, that, knows of my commitment uh, to parliamentary democracy, to respect uh, for institutions. And uh, I want to give the nation the assurance that the prorogation of parliament is a normal thing. The prorogation may be for a longer period because an election is imminent, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with the prorogation of parliament. It is within the constitution. You see, and what I find strange, Eddie, is that those who are making that noise about the prorogation of parliament, they have not been treating the parliament with respect. You know, there are several examples. As a matter of fact, um, there are those... Let's, let's, let's take, for instance, look at the period 1979 to 1983. The parliament was not functioning in Grenada. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are those who subscribe to a doctrine that don't recognize parliament at all. And they today come in and make, are they in love with parliament today? All of a sudden, they become lovers of parliament, which I find strange. When I was championing the cause for parliament and freedom of the press and so on, they were riding high and they didn't care anything about these institutions. No, I'm doing what is within the constitutional framework. I'm not, I've not violated any rights. I've not restricted anybody. We are preparing for an election, Eddie. An election is imminent. But they are saying that you are violating their political rights. No, the, the political rights. They have a right to go out and talk and to campaign. You don't have one could articulate on behalf of your constituents without being in parliament. I, I totally disagree. I don't, I mean, I say I respect parliament. I know the importance of it. But at the same time, if I have to take up an issue on behalf of uh, uh, my constituency on a group, I could do it without the parliament. I could meet the nation and talk to the nation. Mm -hmm. we, we thought Parliament is a legislative body. I agree Parliament has its role to play. But th that is not to say that you cannot you know, carry out your, your democratic you know, responsibility with a uh, Parliament. I, I disagree with them. You know? And in due course, Parliament would be reopened. Parliament could be dissolved. It is part of the, the system under which uh, we operate. But it's not in reality, I don't, I don't have any political life. I have a life to live, and I live, I have a role to play in the society. I mean, I, do see, I, don't, I don't have any political life to, to, to save or anything. I have, a, I have a role to play in the society. I'm going to play my role. As I said, said before, I'm functioning in the political arena. Life is to live, and we all assign different tasks here on, the, on this planet. You have your tasks to play, a role to play in, the, in, in this world. But to say about, this is why I'm different from other politicians. I don't have any political life to save or defend. I defend what is right, what is good, and I promote certain values. So you're basically saying this is not a strategy. It is something that happens every time, at, every year, at this time, the parliament has been prorogued. Since in the days of the NNP? Precis yes, uh, every July, around this, you know, it's, 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 parliament usually prorogues around this time. Uh -huh. And the parliament resumes in, in October. Mm -hmm. It's a normal, you know, a, a recess period, like yeah. we prorogue the parliament. As I say, this time it may be going for a little longer because of um, the eminence of, uh, of an election. However, Eddie, I must say that there are some persons going around saying that I criticized the late Hubbard Blaze uh, when he wanted to prorogue parliament, and now I'm proroguing it myself. But that is not true. As If you could recall, Hubbard Blaze did not prorogue the parliament. Or if he did it, it was not maybe late just before the elections. But as far as I could recall, the National Democratic Congress gave Hubbard Blaze the assurance that we're going to support you in Parliament. We are not going to support Dr. Mitchell in his attempt to bring you down. We're giving you the assurance that you come to Parliament and you have the support of the National Democratic Congress because the National Democratic Congress always look at the national interest. If you could recall, Dr. Mitchell broke away from he took yes, the party, yes, yes, um, left Mr. Blaze stranded, and Mr. Blaze was somewhat concerned. And we gave him the assurance. Dr. Alexis is there. He could testify to that. He, Mr. Blaze was given the, 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 the assurance that we're going to support you in Parliament. We're not going to associate ourselves with Mitchell in the attempt to bring you down. So those who are going about saying that I was critical of Mr. Blaze, they are misleading the public. It's a fabrication. You know, I criticize Mr. Blaze on other issues. But as far as the Parliament is concerned, Mr. Blaze had our full support 
when Dr. Mitchell was about to pull him down. And Mitchell was unable to do it because we gave him that support. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I really hope that, you know, all that you've said here helps to, you know, put that to rest because it's, it's like the road march. Every time, you know, certain individual or individuals appear on radio or TV, they, 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 they're sounding that as if to, to say that you need redemption. <laughs> you know, you need some form of redemption as it relates to your, your, your political legacy. But as you forcefully said here, you don't have a political life. You have a life in general, yeah. and I kind of like that. Yeah, play a, political, play a role in the political arena. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Now, you recently returned from the UAE. Um, I believe you went to a conference of sorts. Yes. Good. Yes. Could you just give us a little breathtaking of that, please? Yeah, it was the World Energy Forum, uh -huh. you know, where the whole issue of renewable energy was being discussed. As you know that um, the UAE is playing a major role in renewables, renewable energy, and they have established a, a, a place you call um, Master City in Abu Dhabi, mm -hmm. and there's a Master Institute, and uh, that institute is training a persons at the Masters and Doctorate level in matters relating to energy. And you have what you call IRENA, the International Renewable Energy Agency. Mm -hmm. IRENA has um, countries that are members of IRENA. And mm -hmm. countries that have membership in IRENA, they could benefit from the, from the scholarship. So uh, essentially, the, the whole idea is to, to, to promote uh, renewable energy. Uh, all the, 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 the countries that are affected with the high cost of fuel, the, most of them are involved in the discussion. We made a presentation at that um, forum outlining what we are doing in Grenada as far as renewable energy is concerned. We mentioned the project we launched in Karikou, mm -hmm. wind energy. We're going to get some wind turbines and to reduce our dependency on fossil fuel in Karikou. We're also looking at geothermal. As you know, we have geothermal potential here in Grenada. And also, we're looking at solar energy. So we're going to get some support from um, IRENA, from Mars, you know, to, to get some support from, from the Mazda City to put together a, a project so that we could benefit from whatever uh, funds are available for renewable energy projects. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it is um, something we see as quite um, beneficial to us in, in that respect. As you know, we played a leading role on the whole climate change front. So Grenada name is noted for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. being involved in the whole climate change debate and renewable energy. As I say, we have the potential, but we do not have the technology. And there we line, linking up with force, forces that could assist us with the technology so that we could get some renewable projects going, not only in Grenada, but most small island developing states, because those are the states that are really threatened mm -hmm. with climate change. That's interesting. Um, Renewable energy, I mean, there's no reason why we should not be in the business of giving people incentives, for instance, to import and erect solar-powered uh, situations for their homes, for their businesses. Is your government looking in that direction? Yes. Well, we have to look in that direction. Uh, we may have a little difficulty in terms that uh, Greenlock has a monopoly, but we have to really, I think, again, all this thing calls for partnership. Mm -hmm. the, the world mm -hmm. is changing, right. and we have to adjust to the changes. Um, and we have to satisfy the citizens of the nation. And uh, we, the object of our government is to make life more comfortable for the citizen. And if we recognize that the cost of fossil fuel is a burden, and we could find another source, mm -hmm. we cannot close our eyes, we have to find, utilize that source. And the sun is a great source of energy. Mm -hmm. And if we could get our citizens to benefit from that, we have to set up the mechanisms and the structures so that we could capitalize on you know, that energy. Fantastic. Mr. Prime Minister, you've been called upon to dissolve Parliament and call elections as the only solution to the state of the country, which is likely to worsen as we proceed. How do you respond to this? Of course, you know where this is coming from. Yeah, well, this is, again, this is purely uh, a political, uh, Eddie. As you know that we've been continue we continue to govern mm -hmm. uh, for the welfare of our people and um, even recent times where well, you just mentioned sandals 
Uh, it's not just coming, why is the parliament has been prorogued? And there are other things that could happen to benefit Grenada. Why is the parliament has been prorogued? I mean, this is purely a, a political game, you know, to really administer the state for the welfare of our people. We recognize the importance of parliament. But I say, Eddie, we're in a, a, a period where an election is imminent. So the parliament could be dissolved any time. Mm. That is the, we have inherited a system. And we have to operate within the system. If there's need for constitutional reform, if there's need for reform, let us sit down and um, discuss constitutional reform. But I'm operating within the constitution. You see, if they could politically, if they feel they could go out and create a, make out a case politically and convince people that that is part of the democratic process. You know, I would, we would respond. We would, we would explain to the people what we are doing. That is part of the whole democratic debate. Mm -hmm. But we're operating within a legal framework. We haven't done anything out of the law, or out of the constitution. And at the same 